This is Pop Culture Period Piece Podcast. I'm Laura. And I'm Julie. We are actors, costumers, movie, and book enthusiasts. But we have very different tastes. So every week we pick a pop culture period piece to talk about. Our thoughts about the movie and also anything the movie brings up. Like how the mummy is totally written through the female gaze and Santa Fe from Newsies is the ultimate I want song. Do you know what that is? Listen to us. So if you like movies with corsets, manners, and cottage core aesthetics, give us a listen. Pop culture period piece has a new episode dropping every Thursday. Goodbye. Bye. You thinking what I'm thinking? Uh-huh. That Lamont Carr is is Judah Maccabee. Yeah. Wait. No, man. What are you talking about? Lamont's nickname was the Hammer, so was Judah Maccabee's. It's for his killer dunks. Judah could dunk? Lamont, idiot. Uh, think of the license plate, JM165. JM, Judah's initials, and 165, the year the Maccabees drove out the invaders and reclaimed the temple. Well, you're forgetting one little thing. Judah's been dead for almost 2,000 years. Ah, uh, details. Ah, uh, details. <laughs> Val, make us some latkes. <laughs> I'll make you some latkes and we'll light the candles. No. Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Welcome to D Commentaries. <gasps> Thank you. Welcome to you and welcome to our listeners. Today, we're talking about Full Court Miracle. Val, happy 2023. Happy 2023. I miss your sweet face. I miss your face and its lovely beautifulness. Wow. Sorry to everyone who didn't know we were taking a break. We didn't post about it. <laughs> well, so it's entirely my fault. I will take full responsibility. I went full and got court COVID. responsibility. I, yeah, I uh, full court pressed by COVID. Um, and thus was not in a condition to record, unlike Al, who pushed through and I did, I did recorded an episode when she had COVID and you probably didn't even know. No, I, I was, definitely was like, ah, yeah, I got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I sounded so much worse, like oh, specifically no, that no. day, like that Thursday when we would have recorded was like the worst. Peak. Uh, so hey, my name's Val. <laughs> exactly. I would have literally been blowing my nose every like two oh, seconds. No. So um, much better mood. Yeah. Fortunately, um, I am better. It was a mild case and it didn't ruin holiday plans at all, which is great. Yeah. So um, and we're also sorry because this movie is literally a Hanukkah movie. And it would have come out <laughs> on the, the like Third First day? night of or third night yeah. of Hanukkah. It would have come out during Hanukkah and it would have been perfect. And it's all my stupid COVID's fault. And I'm really, really sorry. Thank but, you so much from every from me and everyone for acknowledging this thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we had two good things come out of this situation. One is that we've had more time to post all of our fun clips from our amazing interview with Stu Krieger, which. Yep. If you haven't already listened to it, please go back and listen to that interview. He had so many amazing stories to tell. He was so fun. He was really encouraging and like gave us lots of tips and advice about writing and the industry. And um, he's just a really cool dude. And he bought merch that <laughs> is for him and wore it and and like sent us a email on Christmas. I said, Merry Christmas. Tell us. Oh, no. Here's a picture of me and my merch. <laughs> He's literally the nicest human. So we're very glad that we were able to celebrate Stu all throughout the holidays. And um, and the other good thing is that both of us are in a better place to be talking about this movie. <laughs> we are. So, <laughs> so with that said, we're happy to be back. We're happy to to be here with you and we are excited to talk about full court miracle so let us get to the business do your business do your yes. business <laughs> okay so full court miracle came out on november 21st 2003 so i presume that that was probably when hanukkah was that year for those who do not know 
Hanukkah or, or I'm sorry, Jews use the lunar calendar rather than the solar calendar, which is what most of us use. Like that's the, you know, the way the years work, which is why our dates don't line up perfectly every year with our holidays. Like they're not always at the same time every year. Sometimes Hanukkah is closer to Thanksgiving. Sometimes it's closer to Christmas or even after Christmas. So that is what's going on there. So um, it's very possible and probably likely that it was around November 21st of the year 2003. Wow. Val is going to teach us a lot this episode. <laughs> you have come, you have come to your Judaica class for yeah. the year. This is where everyone's going to go by there. I got, uh, or I, uh, what's our oh, bar mitzvah I, shirt? I got bingo at, at D-commentary's bar mitzvah. mitzvah. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Everyone's going to go buy a shirt now. <laughs> like uh, the character TJ in this movie, I am half Jewish and half Christian, and that means I win the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, this movie was directed by Stuart Gillard, so our other Stu, Stu mm -hmm. too. And he also directed Scream Team, which we've already seen. He uh, directed Going to the Mat, which we will be very shortly covering. He also directed Twitches, Twitches 2, and a bunch of episodes of Charmed and 90210. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, it was written by three people. Joel Silverman, uh, who had five total credits, nothing else that I recognized. Joel Kaufman and Donald Yost, who both exclusively only wrote, also wrote Miracle in Lane 2. So they the love only miracles. two movies the only two movies that they ever wrote both have miracle in the title and are both religious in nature. So that was very interesting to me. Maybe they celebrate both holidays because Miracle in Lane 2 skews a bit more Christian, Christian. for sure. There's like a mm -hmm. Jesus mechanic, mm -hmm. lots of talk about heaven for sure. Um very possible. Wow, I blocked out all of those things. <laughs> Yeah, and definitely Silverman and Kaufman are Jewish sounding names to me. I don't want to make any assumptions, but they definitely could be Jewish. Um, Yost, I don't know. I don't think so, but you never know. You never know. My last name is not a Jewish sounding last name at all. So, mm. but I am Jewish because another fun fact about Judaism is it is matrilineal. So yes. it is entirely based on who your mother, what your mother's religion was, and not your father's. So, yes. in some more conservative tracks of uh judaism like they won't bar mitzvah you or bat mitzvah you if only your father is jewish interesting yeah your mother would have to convert okay i'm gonna take a tally i've learned two things so far <laughs> one two <laughs> um okay this cast was fun alex d Linz played alex schlotz schlotzky mm -hmm. um so he was alex playing alex um he's probably most known for being the replacement for macaulay culkin in home alone 3 oh yep. i recognize him from something else is it Max Keeble's big movie? You bet your sweet butt it is, Val. <laughs> That's the Max other Max Keeble's big, big move. Our big move, or is it big movie? It's big move. He, big he move. is moving away. Ah, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've never, obviously never seen it. <laughs> he, was all, he was also the voice of young Tarzan in oh, the movie Tarzan. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did look him up. He is not really around, huh? Yeah. He stopped acting in 2007. Sad. Yeah. He was so cute. I know. He was a, a cutie. cutie. And I thought he was, his acting was good. He too. did great. Yeah. I'd be curious to know if he is Jewish. Linz could be Jewish. Yeah. I don't know. That was my thought with a lot of these characters. I was like, why are you Jewish? I wish, yeah. I wish so much that these were all for sure Jewish people. Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Okay. Um, <laughs> Richard T. Jones played Lamont Carr. One of the hottest people we've ever seen. In a I sitcom. was like sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Magoli is that man like a legitimate 10 out of 10. Yes. And I've seen him in something and I was like looking at his resume and I couldn't place what it was that I've seen him in. Like he's mm -hmm. done a ton of stuff. He's yeah. a character actor. He's been in tons of things. He was on the show judging Amy, Amy as a regular. He was also a regular on the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Um, Narcos and the rookie. And then he was in the movie super eight, which I love. Mm -hmm. Um, but whew, he is a good looking man yeah. and a good actor. Like he did really, really well. 
I really appreciated that he played this straight, if you know what I mean. Like, he wasn't like, I'm in a stupid kids movie. He mm -hmm. was like, no, I'm going to act like this is a real, like, dramatic film that I am. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, this was definitely filmed in Canada. Yes. Because every single. So th what's interesting is we only had one Murdoch mystery in the cast. The okay. cast but we had a ton of versions of Anne of Green Gables. Mm. And then a show called Saving Hope, which is apparently filmed in Canada because literally everyone in the cast had been in at least one episode of Saving Hope. Yeah. So I think it was what it was called. Or maybe it was Saving Grace. I knew it was shot in Canada because I watched the credits and they had like uh -huh. a Canadian like director, not like director. It was like um, the like on site Canadian helper. Like, uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. They had, like, like the a, un second unit director yeah. or whatever. And so yeah. I was like, oh, OK, I guess this was shot in Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Um, OK, then we have R.H. Thompson as I'm sorry, I said that wrong because there's no P in it. R.H. Thompson as Rabbi Lewis and definitely not Jewish, by the way. <laughs> but he was doing his best. He, he was did being so respectful. Good. Yeah, he was great. And so the only two big things that he's ever been in are a show called Avonlea, which was uh, sort of like a spinoff of an Anne of Green Gables story. And then Anne with a knee, which was the most recent Anne of Green Gables Fun. He was iteration. In both. And he played, yeah, and I, I don't, I think he, I don't remember what character he played in Avonlea, but obviously there were years and years in between these two. So he wasn't playing the same uh, character, but in Anne with an E, he played Matthew Cuthbert, who is one of the main characters oh, in cool. the story. Okay. And um, he, I've seen a lot of Matthew Cuthbert's and I think he's my favorite. He yeah. is so delightful. Yeah. And he was as delightful in this. Like, he, I just thought he was. So, oh, yeah. Like, he just like everything he says, you're like hooked. Right. Yeah. He was just so lovable. And again, like someone who is not treating this like a joke, you right. know, like he was like, no, I'm going to take this seriously, which mm -hmm. I, again, appreciate. Um, OK, then we have the players, his his teammates, Sean Marquette played Big Ben Schwartz or I'm sorry, again, I am adding letters in Sean Marquette played Big Ben Swartz. OK, uh, and he was in 13 going on 30. Yes, he was. He's also a voice actor. He was in Rocket Power and Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, and a show called Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. I and watched that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and more recently, he's been on the Goldbergs. Yeah. Another Jewish I family. I didn't see him at first in the group of boys and then immediately was like, that's Maddie. And it, <laughs> because 13 Going on 30 was my first PG-13 movie I saw in the theater. Oh. And it's so good. I mean, it is it is so rewatchable. It is one of the best best rom-coms out there. It's on my list. If we ever do our spinoff podcast. Oh, my. We've talked about I this. I forgot. <laughs> It's so good. I know. We will we will watch it. We will watch it together. Um, Eric Knudsen played TJ Murphy, and he was in Scott Pilgrim versus the world, and oh. he's been in a ton of stuff in in Canada. Okay. Know, a lot of like very obvious shows in Canada. Yeah. Sheila McCarthy played Mrs. Klein, the pr principal of the school. Okay. Fussy lady. She's been in a couple DCOMs. She was in Cowbells, or will be for us, in Cowbells and Zombies 3. She's also okay. in Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. She was also a voice on R The Busy World of Richard Scarry. Oh, love. I, I watched a ton of when I was little. She was also in the movie The Day After Tomorrow. And more recently, she's been on the show Little Mosque on the Prairie, which is another Canadian show that a lot of these people had been in episodes of. Mm. Um, and she's in the movie Women Talking, which is literally in movie theaters right Not now. Right now. Look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, Val, in Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, for anyone who is obsessed with that movie like me, it is Ella's mom. There you go. Um, Linda Cash played Cynthia Schlotsky, Alex's mom. She is a Second City Toronto person. Mm. So she's friends with um, like Eugene Levy and and. Um, Catherine O'Hara and like all of that crew. Um, the she looks so uh, familiar, and I looked through IMDb, and I'm like, I don't. There's nothing that like sticks out. 
Yeah, she, so she's been in a number of the Ernest movies, you know, like Ernest goes to school, Ernest goes west, whatever. <laughs> um, she's also been in at least two of the Christopher Guest movies, which is a lot of the Second City Toronto people are in those movies. Okay. Um, like she was in Best in Show, for example. She was in Waiting for Guffman. Oh, I guess I didn't realize that those were all like Second City Toronto people. Oh, yeah, a lot of them. I mean, Eugene Levy's in like all of them. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and Catherine O'Hare was in at least one of them. Yeah. And I've never seen yeah. Best in Show. <gasps> Add it to my list. Add it to the list. Oh, Have you that seen? That is so f- Oh, what a fun I know, show. especially because my girl's in it. Ah. Yep, she is. Christopher Guest movies are a delight. Yeah. They're, they're so funny. Um, okay. And then you, well, you probably recognize her because she was in Cadet Kelly. Mm-hmm. She was the mom in Cadet Kelly. Um, and she was also in the movie Cinderella Man. Nice. Um, Jason Blicker played Marshall Schlotsky, Alex's dad. Um, and he was in Superstar, State of Grace. State of Grace. That's the one. Mm. the the uh canadian show mm. he was also in the movie the day after tomorrow interesting yep and he was in an episode of murdoch mysteries cool he's our guy mm-hmm. he's cute yeah i liked him i i'd never seen him before in my life but i like no, me him. neither i honestly put him in hot cold dad yeah agreed agreed completely um cassie Steele played julie alex's pal um, and she was on Degrassi, the next generation. She's for pretty, pretty fame. A long time. Yeah. And then she was, she's also a voice on Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm. I'd and, say she is successful. Yeah. 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 And, uh, Jerome Williams, NBA player was playing himself. Casual. <laughs> so pretty okay. fame, pretty fame. Yeah. we got some fame. Um, okay. Here's the synopsis. Lamont Carr, an African-American basketball star, is forced out of the game after a serious knee injury. By chance, he meets Alex, a young Jewish boy who plays for his academy's team. Alex loves basketball, but the team are pretty hopeless and have never won a game. He manages to persuade Lamont to coach them, despite the reservations of the academy's teachers and administrators, and suddenly, the team's fortunes start to look up. Nice. Not not. Terrible, not inaccurate necessarily. Yeah. A little, a little like obscuring some of the main themes of the story, but that's Hanukkah. Okay. Yeah, like the story <laughs> of the Maccabees, but like otherwise. The entire story of Hanukkah. <laughs> Val, uh, before we get into any further, why don't you tell us about the story of Hanukkah? Okay, I will try to be as quick as possible. Great. Hanukkah is a story about Jews not wanting, be, trying to be forced to assimilate to a different culture. Um, and they were, uh, the armies were taking over all of their, all of the Middle East and turning them, I think Christian, but I'm not totally sure. Don't quote me on that. That's not really the point of the story. It's just that they were trying to make them not Jewish anymore. And then uh, one man, Judah Maccabee, gathered a very small army and was like, nah, ah. And went and fought and won back their sacred temple in Israel. And uh, when obviously the temple was trashed. And when they got there, there, there every temple and most Jewish households like uh, that practice Shabbat and all that have a menorah, um, which actually has only um, seven candles total. Um, it's not the same as a Hanukkah. Um, but they went to like light the thing and there was only enough oil for one night's worth of light to keep the lights on in the temple. And they were like, well, we'll light it anyway, because better have light for one day than none at all. And it miraculously stayed lit for eight whole days. And that is why we celebrate eight nights of Hanukkah. Um, and actually, Hanukkah is not like the major holiday by a mile for Jews. It's kind of a sideline holiday, but it's been because of um, commercialization, capitalism, Christianity, whatever. It's been turned into like the Jewish Christmas. Um, so you get your eight nights of presents and all of this stuff. But like traditionally, that's not what it's about at all. So that is Hanukkah. Thank you, Val. Yes. Now, the more important Jewish holidays are like Yom Kippur and, and Pur- Purim. Purim. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yes. So the high holidays, which are in the fall, typically, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Rosh Hashanah, which is our new year, mm. um, Yom Kippur, which is sort of like um, where you kind of purge your sins and are very self-reflective about your year. Um, and there's a couple other ones that are peppered in there, but those are the two like big ones that mm. most people know. And then um, and then there's Purim in the spring, which is like our ha- Halloween. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah. So um, like in Israel, all the kids dress up on Purim. That's when everyone dresses up and has parties and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. So those are like the main ones. There's also like Sukkot, which is where you build Mm -hmm. a big like thing in your backyard. And it's all about like the uh, harvest. And there's a bunch of other holidays. But yeah, Hanukkah is a holiday. It's it is a holiday, but it's sort of like I don't want to minimize it too much. But it's like, you know, we we celebrate like President's Day here and like, you know, not everyone really it's an observed holiday where yeah. some people are celebrating and some people acknowledge yes exactly exactly i think that if if it wasn't such a big deal that like if christmas was not such a big deal here i don't think that hanukkah would have turned into what it is for sure yeah um but yeah so that's Great. the miracle and and judah maccabee is important to this movie so that's why i bring him up and um the eight nights and the oil and all that is important also to this story so that's why it was we wanted to just give you a little background Amazing. in case you didn't know thank you so much yes um all right al first impressions oh uh, val i really liked this movie it's not my favorite <laughs> decom by miles but i I would watch this again. I would make this my yearly Hanukkah movie. Like I, I am into it. Um, I'm going to give this a seven and a half. Wow. Like I, I thought it was fun. I thought the acting was like not terrible or silly. Like there were some parts obviously where you're like rolling your eyes and this and that, but I thought that it was fun, engaging and really, I think a problem that we see in DCOMs a lot is we know what's going to happen and then we go around in a circle three or four times until we finally have a solution. And I really saw this movie being one streamline of a plot and we saw all of the points and it wasn't like circling back, circling back, circling back. There were some twists. There were some turns. I thought that it was really, really well done. Great. Um, Val, first impressions. So first of all, this movie was made for me yeah! in some ways. So I, too, went to a Jewish school growing up in a city. I, too, was on a very bad basketball team. Oh, my God. I was the point guard on that basketball team. Oh, my God. And I, too, had a friend who went to a Catholic school <gasps> and wore the Catholic school uniform. Val is Alex and E. Lenz. I am Alex E. Lenz. And I went and found. No. Uh huh. So I, so obviously girls don't typically traditionally wear kippas or yarmulkes. Uh huh. Um, but I was part of the, like the little girls were like, why do the boys only get to wear them? So I have a bunch of them because the boys had to wear them during the school day. So I have my <gasps> school kippa. Oh my gosh, Val! And yep. I even have the pins. The pin is still in the bag. I just or maybe got it, goosebumps. It fell out. Here, so this pin cute. is probably older than some of our listeners. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then I also have this one, which doesn't have any branding on it, but it has my name, my <gasps> Hebrew name. Well, my name written in Hebrew because I refused to take a Hebrew name. <laughs> so oh that just says Valerie gosh. in uh, in Hebrew letters. Valerie. So, yeah, so I have my kippahs. So we called them. So in the movie, they call them yarmulkes a lot. And there's it's spelled yarmulk. So mm-hmm. like if you've ever seen like yarmulk written, mm-hmm. that's the, they're saying yarmulke. There's a lot of words like that. Even Hanukkah is spelled a million different ways because it's using letters that don't exist in the English language. Right. But anyway, um, we said kippa, which I think is more of like an Israeli term. Maybe I I, I don't really know. I've heard it obviously both used, but um, like when people are presenting to like non-Jewish people, they more typically say yarmulke. So. That's why they were saying Yamaka in the movie. Third thing I've learned. <laughs> okay. Wow. That is, thank you so much for sharing, Val. That's so fun. Yeah. So because of that, I was definitely like, I like this movie. Like, this had is you fun. seen it before? No, I'd never okay. seen it before. I don't think I mentioned um, it. I hadn't seen it either. Okay. Yeah. So this so, is one of the ones I never saw. 
Wow. All right. So for the most part, I really liked this movie. I enjoyed it. I thought the performances were good. I thought that the story was nice. I I liked how they portrayed most of the characters. Um, There were a couple things that made me uncomfortable. Yeah. One is that so recently on TikTok, this kid went viral, a white young man, um, because he was sort of like doing this bit where he'd be like white people doing something and then he'd be like black people doing something and it would be i guess completely accurate so black people were like stitching it a lot on tiktok and being like this is funny and true but for some reason it makes me i'm like nervous because it's a white kid making this joke i know what you're talking about now yeah and like it was this big thing. And then, of course, like a bunch of people started stitching it and doing like long thought, you know, pieces about like why he shouldn't be doing it and blah, 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 whatever. The point is that I think that what they were like, that discomfort that they were sort of like, I can't figure out why this makes me nervous um, is sort of what I was feeling some of the time when I was watching this movie, because there are a lot of like jokes or references that are specific to like being Jewish. Okay. And, um, if made by a Jewish person, totally fine, obviously. Right. But if being made by a Christian person to sort of like make another Christian person laugh, less fine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Feels a little like icky. Right. So like, even something as simple as like at one point the dad is wearing a kiss me I'm kosher like apron (laughs) and like there's nothing inherently wrong with that and I get it like they're trying to illustrate and show instead of tell that these people are pretty religious they're pretty Jewish they keep kosher they go to a private Jewish school you know the rabbi is obviously very uh, important to their family like there's a lot of things that make it very clear that they and they were keep us all the time which the vast majority of Jews do not do. So like they're very like religious relative to a lot of other American Jews. So like there's nothing inherently wrong with some of these jokes. Like for example, another time the rabbi says something on your mind besides your yarmulke. And like inherently there's nothing wrong with that joke, right? Even though it's being made by a guy who's pretending to be a rabbi who is not Jewish. That's, that's okay. But like, I was I there was a part of me that was like, would a real rabbi make that joke? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So there was just like a small part of me the entire movie where I was like, you know, like just sort of a little bit nervous. But I think that they they never like fully crossed a line or anything like that. They never like and and again we the writers. I'm pretty sure at least two of the three of them are Jewish. So like they're representing like it's okay. Um, But yeah, so that was like that was the only thing. And then the other problem that I had with this movie is the mom. (laughs) So there's a part of me that's like so annoyed with this character because she's very one dimensional. Right. She's like you, you think to yourself when you first see her like no one acts like this. But they do. That's the thing. They do act like that. And that's the problem. The, but the the issue that I had with it is a couple things. One, this is a comedic actor. This is a second city trained comedian who has worked with people who have like won awards for their comedy. Don't waste her in this like overly serious, horrible person character. Like what a waste of this person. So that was problem number one I had. Problem number two is like this is a stereotype and it's a stereotype because it's true but it's also like again like i don't love overplaying the stereotypes to make the point like we get it and of course then there's the other piece of it which is like my mom was like this my mom would try to make me quit soccer every year i i absolutely did get a little bit of psd ptsd because it is like I want this for you and I'm telling myself that it's because I want the best for you, but I'm ignoring everything that matters to you and makes you who you are, which is like a very hurtful thing. I apologize for this negative tangent, but I did genuinely like this movie. I liked like I thought that um, the kids were fine. 
But I thought the adults really shined in this movie. Yeah. I really liked the rabbi. I really liked the guy who played Lamont. I really liked even the like smaller characters. Um, like the principal was whatever. She was fine. She was very stereotypical and one dimensional. But like the, the teacher who was the original basketball coach who just kept popping up. Oh, my God. What so a funny. <laughs> He was so funny. So I really enjoyed and I did like the dad. Um, I thought the the dinner, the Shabbat dinner was really interesting and like a fun way to kind of or like a more creative way to like talk about some of this stuff um, and educate, like truly educate people on like what it is to keep kosher and like like different a aspects of like tradition and whatever, like what foods people eat and like all of those kinds of things um, without like just saying it. Yeah. So I liked that as well. Okay. Sorry. I talked a lot. That's okay. Uh, Al, <laughs> uh, did you have any favorite quotes or moments? Yeah, I did. <clears throat> um, you said the one, the something on your mind besides that yarmulke. <laughs> he said it a couple times and it's just, it was just such a, great Enduring. line every time yeah um you're the only team in history who should be sued for malpractice you're the only team in history who should be sued for malpractice because <laughs> they were so bad they hadn't won in correct me if i'm wrong 75 games val something like that it's yeah. in two years at one yeah point, so it's like so. 75 games of like not winning yeah um at least ben can make it up and down the court great now he's lousy at both ends <laughs> <laughs> so mean so mean um oh uh they started singing a song i don't know what the song was but it's like so come on over even if you're not kosher <laughs> was that that song right there was there was like a weird like train song. song. There was oh a yeah. Oh yeah. We're gonna talk <laughs> musical number. Okay. <laughs> um, I feel like a gefilte the fish out of water. Um so the the coach calls calls them his dogs, and so he goes, What do dogs do? Barf on the carpet? <laughs> I didn't even hear that one. <laughs> That's so funny. Um uh, and then the the coach that Val was talking about a couple of minutes ago of like the funny coach who comes around, he was like, I teach algebra and then was like trying to search for something in his jacket. And he's like trying to take his jacket off and he was kind of wearing like a pea coat. So like folds over this way in here, the buttons are here. And he just goes. <laughs> And then he ultimately and then he pulled ultimately the pulls bottom. his whole jacket up to get into his pants pocket. <laughs> oh my god! He was like, <laughs> was and he so, was looking for a ruler. <laughs> it was so funny, which he apparently just carries with him everywhere. Yeah. Else. Um, oh and then a god. couple of my favorite moments. Um, uh, young Mark Ruffalo's a yamaka had a small white <laughs> dot on it. And yeah. it, every time I looked at it, I thought I was like, is he balding? Like it literally was like, <laughs> it just like didn't look. And it's because his hair and the outside of the Yamako were, were the same color. So it just blended right. in and it looked like he had a little bald spot. <laughs> um, <clears throat> do, 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 do. Uh, I have realized that DCOMs are obsessed with bike safety, which we love. Yeah. But then anytime a, a bully is like trying to bully and they're in a bike gang with helmets on, I'm like, this doesn't hit. This. <laughs> it's very funny. Um, and then uh, so uh, it's called Full Court Miracle because mm -hmm. their new coach has introduced a full court press. Mm -hmm. And something that is funny about this movie is a lot of the basketball is actually terrible. And mm. in the end of the movie, the other team is clearly full court pressing as well. So it's <laughs> not like <laughs> it's not like doing a full court press is anything like revolutionary. No, <laughs> it's literally what everyone does. Every time Alex shoots, it's with both hands. Oh, my every God, single amazing. time. <laughs> I kid does not know how to play. Um, uh, yeah, I thought, oh, gosh, this movie was just so sweet. Val, do you have any favorite quotes or moments? Yes. Um, so I also wrote something on your mind besides your yarmulke. And I just noted this. This isn't a quote. But at the very beginning when, like, Julie and Alex are parting ways at the beginning of school, like, she says, like, 
hasta luego or whatever, you know, something in Spanish. And then um, he goes, shalom. But the the caption said, so long. (laughs) Oh, that's funny. (laughs) So either someone was like, I don't understand what this is. And I think it's he's saying so long or. I don't think anyone will understand what shalom means. So, so I have to yeah. put so <laughs> It's probably a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, how come you only get bees in school? It's a matter of passion, which <laughs> I can relate to. Uh, another like sweet one. Someone was saying like, I'm something like putting themselves, limiting themselves. And he goes, ah, uh-uh. Lamont goes, don't ever put yourself in a box, which I love. He was such a good coach. (laughs) Um, He was a great coach. Uh, And then so the mom is like saying, like, I want to get more mojo or something like that. And then she goes, I can't find the espresso machine. The dad goes, then I guess you'll have no Joe. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I also wrote, I feel like a gefilte fish out of water. Mm -hmm. If you chase big dreams, you make big sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Also another good one. Those were the main quotes. As far as favorite moments, I, I like I already said, I really like the Shabbat dinner a lot. And I also really like the um, moment when uh, Alex discovers that Lamont is homeless. Yeah. And he like stays for dinner and they kind of have a quiet moment and talk. This movie, because it's a sports movie and it's also like a young person's movie, it's there's a lot of movement they're always like talking and walking down the hall which i was like are they trying to be like west wing yeah (laughs) um but uh there were these couple moments that were much quieter which i like really appreciated and also showed lamont as more of uh like i thought he was the most well developed developed character which i really appreciated about yeah. him and they took the time to kind of like show you know he's smart he's witty he's like doing what he thinks is right he's not just sort of like a you know schlub who's not trying right. or who like gave up or whatever mm-hmm. um so i i appreciated that a lot um yeah i think that's it i did like so the full court press thing was inspired by a story about how the Maccabees won, which is that they actually won by having a really inspired defense. So they like, he was like, our offense is going to be a really good defense. And I thought that that was really cool. So yeah, liked it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, let's put on, let's, uh, let's take off our practice pennies, pennies, pennies. And, uh, you know, hop on our bikes with our motorcycle helmets. <laughs> We're only wearing helmets on our bikes, biking to the court that is Spoiler City <laughs> in our practice pennies. And we're completely nude on the bottom half, which is <laughs> which is some might say controversial for riding a bike, but not here. Not to Spoiler City. <laughs> Val liked that one. Oh, As a biker, that. she liked that one. <laughs> I did. Okay, lights up on the Maccabees. Lights for eight nights. Lights for eight nights. Um, Alex is a basketball star. He's going to be holding a basketball this entire movie. Mm, um, not well. Not well. Um, <laughs> wait, can his name is Alex in the movie and it's Alex in real life. Yes. Okay, cool. I wanted to make sure that I had that right. So now when yes. I refer to it as Alex... It's both. Everyone calls him Schlotz, though. Schlotz. Schlotz. It's his last part of it's his nickname from his last name. Mm-hmm. Okay, this movie's about Hanukkah, and we're learning about Hanukkah in class. And it's uh, a very much foreshadowing of, of this entire movie. And then Alex is starts to Alex starts to daydream uh, with a basketball team intermixed with the story of Hanukkah because Israel needed a great leader and the Maccabees were being forced to assimilate as Val has previously said. And so it's this daydream. Um, then uh, we go to the basketball court. The team is really bad. Some guys are sitting on the bench reading. The coach is grading papers. They're just very bad at sports. Um, as we know, they haven't won in 75 games. Um, one of the guys on the team who goes to this Jewish school just doesn't believe that Hanukkah was like real. And he just like really <laughs> doubts the idea of Hanukkah and that eight days and that it just seems like an elongated, fabricated story. Val. As a quick interjection here, it is very Jewish to encourage skepticism. 
So okay. it's like one of the only religions that I'm aware of where it is very encouraged to be skeptical of. Which everything. I think is healthy for your religion. We need more mm-hmm. of that. I agree. Um, then there is one of the other kids says that it was a miracle and you know, they're having this like really nice dialogue of like back and forth of like, no, it was real. No, it wasn't. Um, Alex really wants to win and he'll do anything for it. And all the boys laugh at him. Ha 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 ha. We find out that Ma, uh, Alex's mom is a doctor. She doubts his ability and his dream that he wants to play in the NBA. Um, but then we see him playing basketball with dad. So we can see that mom is, is very school forward. Dad is very sport activity, supportive, whatever you want to do forward. Um, and then basically they need a Judah Maccabee to save the team. They need their Judah to come in and save them from from you know not existing anymore and then um uh, there's the quote of when you really need it god gives you what you need and they look over to the other court and they see a guy playing basketball making every shot and so alex is like oh yeah i'm gonna go talk to this guy and have him see if he wants to be our coach like literally alex for being you know a 13 14 year old kid very very smart yes um Then we see the we meet Lamont Carr. He played for the Cavaliers. Um, He he had a almost uh, an almost career ending injury in knee surgery. And uh, he is in Philly practicing, practicing. He's basically going to almost said audition. Oh, my God, I'm the worst. He's going to he's going to try out for the Sixers, which is why he's in town. Um, And they're kind of putting together the puzzle pieces. Uh, The one guy is like, he's Judah Maccabee. His nickname was the hammer. He is JM 165 license plate. So this is our cold open here. He's like and Alex is kind of like, no, man, he's literally just a coach, Uh, which is very interesting that Alex is kind of not believing the storyline of that Mm -hmm. right away but he asks him to coach and he originally says no um and then uh he goes no but i know that like you're in here and you need a job and you need something to do um and he proves him wrong because he googled him on the net (laughs) god the 2000s were great um so they finally convince him and he coaches a practice and and they they have to start paying him so it was basically like you need money i know you do you are no longer employed right now if you coach us we'll give you money so the kids are using their allowance they're trying to like do all these things um and you kind of like look at him in his van and you're like he seems like he needs like money money and he then we see him in his van and he's looking at a wife a picture of his wife and kid so he's wearing a wedding ring so we know that he has a family he know we know he's somewhere but you can kind of tell that that he's starting to exhibit like mild signs of living out of his car slash homelessness Mm -hmm. um then we go back to Alex's house and has a conversation with his mom. And she's like, Oh, I got you this great opportunity. You're going to be an intern at the hospital. I got you a spot signed up. And he's like, no, I don't want to do that. And she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are going to do that. And so she's very, very academic forward, kind of pushing her narrative onto Alex throughout a lot of this movie. Yeah. Um, what I found interesting about that really quickly is yeah. that like he's clearly not interested at all in doctoring, but yeah. what he is good at is talking, which like, Someone even says at one point, like, you'd be a great lawyer, you know, like, I don't know why she was so dead set on him being a doctor when she could have been like, you could be a lawyer, you could be a sports agent, or you could be any number of other things where like talking is your entire job. Anyway, keep going. So then we get to Lamont's car. It's broken down. um, And Alex kind of like goes up and gives him this pep talk, which is so funny that it it, to Val's point that she just made of like, he's really good at talking. Um, And he's like please keep coaching us. We will find you the money. Like, please, please, please. Like we, we will do anything we can to help. So the boys, um, start to make money to help. They, they start, start a coffee cart right out of school. Um, it's very, so, it's so cute. Very <laughs> bake sale esque. Um, and then the rabbi invites Lamont to Hanukkah, um, uh, which I believe is the first night Val he was invited to. I think he invited him to Shabbat. Dinner. Oh, he invited. it. Okay. Yeah. Did, did they, didn't they light together though? There were was... there was a separate scene where they were lighting the Hanukkiah. Uh-huh. Um, but he wasn't there for that. It was just the three of them, like just Oh, their I thought family. he was there because he slaps on <laughs> slaps. Because he puts on a yarmulke. I thought they were like standing Oh, around you're right. The, like, when was that? That was like later. When was I that? I thought it was then. 
No. Oh, uh, maybe it was. So I think it was both. Okay. I think we're both right. I, I think, think so it was too. like Shabbat dinner, but also like happened to be one of the nights of Hanukkah. Like I yeah. think it was like, I don't know, maybe like the third or fourth night of Hanukkah. Because we saw him light the first candle with his, just his parents. And then he lit like maybe the last one or the second to yeah, last one probably. with just his parents. So, um, but yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, he, I think he, he did the have first to put night on another day. So maybe this was like yeah. night three or four or something. Yeah, middle middle of the. So, um, uh, they're having a conversation at dinner, and they're talking about how basketball and things. And uh, she makes a comment: "If you understood everything God did, you'd be God." And I literally wrote in parentheses: "I was like, I'm sucks." Um, <laughs> I don't think she said that line, but that was just like a part of the lot a part of the like whole thing of her just like not being supportive and just being a very mean person. Um, then the rabbi offers Lamont to coach at school. And then I wrote mom sucks again. Um, <laughs> he says no coach. He says no to coaching cause he wants to play for the Sixers. And he's like, that's my priority. I'm not going to like become a school basketball coach. Um, and rabbi is like, it's temporary. The moment you get on the, the Sixers, you're done. Like it's totally fine. We will take you as long as we can, but then at least he's getting paid. He has a job and he's, you know, a consistent thing for these guys. Um, then dad sticks up for Alex, uh, which we love. Uh, he was very like, you need to be more supportive. So there was a conversation needed to be bigger. Dad needed to step up a little bit more, but at least he did small way right here. Mm -hmm. Um, the rabbi tells Lamont the story of Hanukkah and he compares it to the team and how they need to find the other team's weakness, um, which is, uh, as Val said earlier as well, finding the way to defeat them in a very creative way and in a different way. Uh, other than what they're expecting. And so basically it's a full court press. Um, then we follow Lamont under a bridge. So, uh, cause they're like something fishy is going on. And, um, we, we, sorry, I read my notes too far and then I got stumbled. <clears throat> so we follow Lamont under a bridge and we find out that he is indeed homeless. Alex was biking behind him to try to figure out and like kind of talk to him. Um, we also find out that his knee pain is really bad. He was like rubbing his knee um, and Alex goes and finds him and they have a conversation. Um, so we have confirmed that he is homeless. He is living out of like a like a sprinter van. Uh, then we get to school and in order to be paid, the school needs his address for insurance. This is a very funny little interaction here. And he doesn't have an address cause he lives out of a van. And so he says seven, six, which is funny. 76 sixers, uh, <laughs> two, seven. And then like looks up at a picture of Thomas Jefferson and goes Jefferson. And she goes, okay, thank you. And then he goes, thanks Tom. <laughs> this is very funny. Um, it, I keep writing Hanukkah once again, Hanukkah. Oh, it's Hanukkah because this is where he's with his only his family. He gets a book for school. Once again, mom sucks. Um, so one of his like eight nights gifts was like a school book. Um, then they they. Tr Sorry, but also his dad bought his uh, what's the guy, the player's name whose card he sold, Dr. Oh, I don't know. Hold on. Oh, that's something I didn't mention was that he sold baseball cards to be able to his like fancy baseball cards to be able to pay Lamont. Dr. J, Julius Irving. So he had this like limited edition Dr. J card that was probably worth he got it for his bar mitzvah and it was worth like hundreds of dollars and he sold it to mm -hmm. pay uh, Lamont. And then his dad found out about it and bought it back for him for Hanukkah, which so was cute. like the sweetest thing. So cute. Okay. So then, um, we need him to have some kind of to, to stay a coach. He needs to have an address. And so Alex's dad is a realtor and they find out that he has like this empty apartment space that he's not being able to sell. So he, they, they make this, uh, deal for him to stay there, um, until he can leave, pay for it, whatever. I wrote Val fills in blank because I don't remember <laughs> what the deal was. Um, if Val, if you remember he, so originally, um, he just wanted him to stay there. Like he was just like, no, just stay here. And Lamont wouldn't accept that. So he was like, I'll do some stuff around here to get it ready to sell. Great. Cause like it just wasn't selling. So he's like, I'll paint, I'll like fix stuff up. So that was like the agreement that they Perfect. came to. Thank you so much, Val. Yes. Then we find out that Alex is bad at school. And so he can't play <laughs> basketball because his grades are bad. He failed a test. And so um, the team comes together because um, they say one of your dudes needs help. So they come together, help him study, teach him new things. And 
go through the book together to help him study before retaking the test because the teacher is giving him one chance to try. So basically he can't play basketball until he, did you hear that Chicago basketball? Uh, he can't play basketball until uh, he <laughs> passes the test. So they're at practice and they're like having fun and they're laughing and they're like dancing. And they're just like oh, when he was fun. like playing the music. Laugh, yeah. laugh out loud. And then he, he basically steals the remember the Titans like, Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, people want to know. They they stole it, they straight up stole it. So um, then Alex passes the test so he can play and then practices short so that Lamont can uh, play basketball with his famous basketball friend, which is Jerome Williams, who is actually Jerome Williams. Um, <laughs> and then he gets signed to a 10-day contract with the Sixers. So basically, um, he's out. He's no longer coaching. He's like, the mo- I told you the moment that I get signed, like, I'm, I'm not going to do... And so then I write, uh, this is where we get to the point of it being a real story because (laughs) it was very much like uh, the Maccabees coming in here. And uh, he, Alex sticks up to his mom and in a very, very mature way of um, I'm very proud of you, mom. I, 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 what you want for me is not what I want. And he really sticks up for himself. It's, it's really actually kind of cool. He says, you yeah. don't know anything about me. Um, and Oh God, that scene was awesome. So then, mm-hmm. um, they play with no Lamont. I mean, they are starting to play and Alex, um, gets, gets fouled at the last second. He makes the final, uh, free throws and he, he, he throws it with both hands. He makes <laughs> both shots. And so they're going to the finals because the last, Within the last 10 days, they've actually, you know, done well enough, won their first game, all this stuff. Um, then the school, the school makes lion's hats. Um, and, and then there's this really cool dreidel song. And there is a musical <laughs> number because they are dancing on the court. The five starters of this team are dancing. It is a musical number. And I will not accept any other answer. <laughs> Um, so mom, um, was going to drive Julie, his friend, Julie, who goes to Catholic school, um, to the game, but she said she has to go do something else first. So she just drops Julie off and goes somewhere else. Um, then there's this really bad storm and mom goes to the 76ers arena to go pick up Lamont. Cause she's like, there's a bad storm. I, th- this is how I make it, make it up to my son. I'm going to go pick up the coach after the game and bring him over. And then the lights go out in the gymnasium <laughs> and then mom um finds Lamont and he's not there because he has a broken car so she's like dude I like I like she's trying she goes try again and then there's a lightning strike and then his car magically turns on no idea no idea and then I and I said it works full court miracle um then you can't have more than one miracle yeah there's so many miracles in this movie so then um the lights go out because of the storm so the gym has no no light the entire team the entire both entire teams are out looking at this electrical box makes no sense this plus the entire faculty this was the point of the movie where i was like okay we're not believable anymore like this moment where i was like the teams would not be out there in the rain um like i will believe everything else the ironies of of judah maccabee i'll take that i will not take these teams leaving the gymnasium to go stand in the rain (laughs) Um, so they're all looking at the electrical box and then they can use the fuel generator until it runs out. And then I wrote, I'm sensing an eight days of oil moment. (laughs) Um, so basically the fuel generator is, you know, has, has its thing and it's got a certain amount. And then once the generator runs out, we're out of power until it all comes back on. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the boys do be back in town. Let's go. (laughs) Um, and so uh, they're, they're like, okay, how much time do we have with the fuel? And they're like two minutes and 40 seconds, even though on the clock, it says there's five minutes left. They've mm-hmm. said, we know that there's two minutes and 40 seconds left of light. So we will play until the lights go out. And whoever's in the and lead, whoever's wins. in the lead when the lights go out, will win the game. And the other team is currently in the lead by, by like 15 or by 12 or something. So they're yeah. ahead by a lot. So with five minutes left, you could come back with oh, yeah. two minutes and 40 seconds, a little bit harder. <laughs> so um, then there's only a couple minutes left and the other team takes a timeout when they're down by 10 now. And so that's a full minute. And they're it, taking a full 60 second timeout is taking time away from the lights that are left. 
Then we have Lamont shows up and he's like, all right, let's go. We got five minutes on the clock. And they're like, no, dude, we have like 45 seconds. So the fuel runs out. It's dark. The other team is starting to celebrate. And then it starts back up a full court miracle. The fuel (laughs) ran out. We watched it run out, but the generator keeps on pumping. And then within all of that time, they've come back. There's a game winning shot. The scoreboard is literally about to blow up out of the wall. We've got sparklers (laughs) shooting out of the scoreboard. And, and then Alex shoots it like this. (laughs) And then win. Oh, wow. It was amazing. And you know what, Val? There was someone missing there. Mom was missing and we, we don't know why. No, she was there. Uh Uh-uh. She wasn't there because she shows right the last second with Lamont Oh, and right. his wife and his kid, because he wasn't going to go to the game so we could pick them up from the airport. And mom so graciously offered, I will go pick up your wife and kids so that you can go and be with the team, make them win. And then they hire Lamont full time, full time coach. He's not going to the Sixers. He realized it's not for him. He's going to be a coach. Full court miracle. The miracle of Hanukkah. <laughs> So fun. Love this movie. It will become a part of my my holiday repertoire. Okay. Welcome to Full Court Bingo. Wait. (laughs) Miracle Bingo. Full Court Miracle Bingo. (laughs) You know what, Val? I'm going to start. Okay. Okay. Here we go. One Hit Wonder Song. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Wait, what is it called? It's by Soul Survivor. I don't think that they're actually... It's S-O-L Survivor. Yeah. It, I don't believe that it is like anywhere. Like, no, it's not. Literally, it's on YouTube and it's someone who screen recorded the the movie. I couldn't find any of the songs on Spotify. Yeah, but it is a one hit wonder because I love it. And it's um, a wonder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a wonder. It's a wonder. (laughs) Breaking the fourth wall or looking into the camera. No, I didn't see any. No. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the situation that this didn't come out <laughs> on the holiday where it lined up with our schedule. I but know. it's okay because we can put an X and a tiny little shadow of a, of a menorah right in the back. Hanukia. <laughs> Very excited. I learned what a Hanukia was today. I'm adding that to my list of things I've learned. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Clunky metaphor. I mean, my God. It doesn't get clunkier. (laughs) I hate to say it. (laughs) Parents who just don't get it. Mom. 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 Cool non-parent adult. Lamont and the rabbi. Oh, yeah. Both of them are cool. Mm -hmm. Someone too famous for a TV movie. I mean, the NBA player, I guess, but... Oh. I mean, he definitely... Was way bigger in 2003, Jerome Williams, yeah. than he is now. So I would say, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll do it. Competition to resolve the central problem. <gasps> wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Once again, doesn't get any bigger than this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this the perfect decom? Like, are we about to, like, fill this card, basically? I don't know. <laughs> I just had like a mini like I just associated for a sec when you said that. <laughs> uh, okay, montage sequence. Yes, there's a few yes. basketball ones. Yeah, the practices and stuff. Yeah, cliche villains. Yeah, the opponent team like and mom. TJ or what, Tyler. Well, yeah, mom too, but like Tyler, yeah, Tyler the, the kid on the other, of the team. other team. Yeah. yeah. Blech. Blech. Clothes or items you owned. Yeah. I, I mean, we, I I mean okay, yeah. I'm going to say I, we both played. You played basketball growing up? Yeah. Yeah, I played basketball growing up. We both played yeah. basketball for a yeah. private school growing up. Yeah. Also, I literally am holding my, I have a keeper. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes, 40 to 60. Woo. Woo. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 57. 44. Okay. All right. We get the box. We do get the box. We get the box. Great job. Happily ever after. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone the gets <laughs> Almost kissing. No. 
No, no one was kissing this one. Lamont kisses his wife. That's a kiss. Okay. Oh, it's a kiss. Because an almost kiss is when you're right here. And then when you you were you were <laughs> almost kissing before you kissed. <laughs> Someone who became famous. Julie. Julie. Uh betraying of one's real friends or values. I don't think so. I like he lies to his parents a little bit, but I almost feel like his mom kind of forces him. Yeah, I agree. Into that situation. Mm-hmm. Like, I think he would have told the truth to his dad. Yeah. Like all else being the same. So I don't think so. Yeah. Your childhood crush. Oh, yeah. Childhood Did crush you- of Alex D. Lenz because of Max Keeble's big move. And now Oof. I have a crush on the mom. Oh, my God. He's Whew. so good looking oh my god and he's tall oh yeah (laughs) obviously bad special effects or stunts the only stunts that i really saw was when he was following him on his bike you could obviously tell like that wasn't him it wasn't obviously bad but it wasn't him right I'd say no. I think or but if we're talking obviously bad, if this box said obviously bad basketball, we would mark. Oh, but honestly, like, I'm glad they didn't just put in adults, grown (laughs) men playing basketball. Like, I'm glad it was just they just let them play bad basketball. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah. Uh, Disney Channel star. Uh, No, no, no. So this is not the perfect. (laughs) Yep. Whoops. Oops. (laughs) <laughs> musical number um all right i'll give it to you al they danced and i know but they're not cheer. they're not dancing to the song yes they were <laughs> okay fine the whatever crowd was cheering <laughs> okay thank you i will not accept any other answer <laughs> all right magic <gasps> Hanukkah magic. Are we saying? I, okay. At least the one part where the van turns on and she's like, try it one more time. That was magic. Yeah. So is the light staying on when it was past E. Past E. Science is <laughs> real. Yeah. That too. He does some algebra to figure out how long it's going to take for it to run out. Science is a real magic. <laughs> Someone says the title of the movie. Just me no. a bunch of times in the, <laughs> in the synopsis. Scuba dude. Um, they don't. Well, actually, one of the kids does kind of figure out the generator, but also they've, you know, their whole arrangement with Lamont at the beginning, I would say, is I agree. Scooby Doo ish. I agree. And like the, the coffee cart and all of that stuff. Yeah. The heroes create the problem. I would no. say no because it's just they're just kids who play basketball and that's yeah the they're problem. just bad at basketball that's yeah. it. Lead is a gefilte fish out of water. Hey, <laughs> hey. Nice. Opa. what lead are we talk- talking? Yeah, about? Yeah, I mean, if we are, I'd say we can count it because Lamont is a lead. I think so too, and he is a gefilte fish out of water. All right, Val, I want you to full court miracle guess how many bingos we got. Well, I wish I could say eight, but I'm going to say three. Divided by two, it's four bingos. Oh, four bingos. Okay, we have our second line down. Cool non-parent adult, someone too famous for a TV movie, competition to resolve central problem, a montage sequence, cliche villains. Our second, our, our third line down, closer items you own, Rotten Tomatoes 40 to 60, happily ever after, almost kissing, and someone who became famous. We have our... Um, O of our bingo, uh, the the line down all of the way. We have parents who just don't get it. Cliche villains, someone who became famous, musical number, and lead is a fish out of water. We also have one more going from our bot, uh, starting at B, going all the way down to the bottom and diagonal all the way up. We have magic, your childhood crush, happily ever after, a montage sequence, and parents who just don't get it. Wow, it's a Hanukkah miracle. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, hopefully you'll keep that that uh, that 
good luck going for our game of Backdoor Fiction. Ooh, okay. All right, Val, I'm going to tell you the title of a sports movie, and I need you to tell me if it was based on a real story Ooh. or not okay okay so the answer is either going to be fact this is a based on real yep, yep, facts yep. or fiction it is not based on a real story got it all okay. right here we go our first movie val remember the titans fact that is correct i love remember the titans miracle in lane two fact that is correct based on true story justin yoder <laughs> Here we go. Keeping with the miracle theme, miracle. Fact. That's correct. That's the hockey one, right? That's the hockey. Yeah, I love that one, too. I love sports movies. You don't say. <laughs> the Sandlot. Ooh, actually, fact. <laughs> I don't think so. You now. have it as fiction. Yeah. But I thought... I thought the guy, the like commentator is a real person. Aside from remaining one of the most quoted sports comedies ever, the Sandlot also has ties to real life. A major plot point involves a legendary dog who lives beyond the fence, though the events are much more dramatized. So it's not so much like based on a true story as like it was like he took his own life and kind of just like. Oh, OK. All right. Whatever. That's fine. Fiction. <laughs> Okay. Motocrossed. Fiction. That's correct. There's no way two two people in that family were named the same thing. <laughs> okay, no. If, have you met Philip Phillips? <laughs> <laughs> Chariots of Fire. Fact. That's correct. Double teamed. Fact. That's correct. Last question coach carter Ooh. fiction incorrect shoot i love that movie but i, I haven't seen it in so long hopeful. yes i am hopeful for today value got six out of eight and that thing away and we're hopeful hopeful I know it ain't easy, but that's okay because we're hopeful. The kid from Alley Cat Strike is in the coach's movie. son yes. in that movie. Hot. Hot. Val! Oh, a joy. I missed you so much. <laughs> I missed you so much. And next episode, we will be watching Going to the Mat, another sport. With. A special guest. Mm -hmm. Someone near and dear to our hearts. Very. Um, well, what a treat. Thank you for teaching me four things today. <laughs> um, I'm so grateful for you and your friendship and your insight to a world I know minimal about. I am very grateful to, for your friendship and that you cared enough to listen to my stuff. Um, but yeah, buy our, uh, bat mitzvah merch, buy yes. uh, our stew merch. Um, there's the sale might be over by the time this comes out, mm. but there's a lot of sales. So if you want to know when our next merch sale is, um, I would actually recommend subscribing to Trident's newsletter because yeah, we always put when there's one. a merch sale at the bottom of the email. All right. All right. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Bye, Val. Bye, Al. This podcast was produced by me. And me. And it was edited by me. The music was composed by Michael McNally. You can find us online at thetridentnetwork.com slash decommentaries hyphen pod. And you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at decommentaries. Decommentaries is a part of the Trident Network. To learn more about our videos, live shows, and other podcasts, please visit thetridentnetwork.com. Disney Channel Original Movies. Damn it, Ellie.